yeah. All right, Shalom. We're back. We're gonna pick up in the uh, 26th chapter of Numbers for the second half. Uh, it's a lot, about 60 something verses here. So bear with me if we get through this expeditiously as well as judiciously. Right, can you turn that uh that heat off? It's getting a little warm in here. Yeah, just put it to the middle. The bottom. All right, so numbers 26 and 1, which starts with Wa Yahaya. All right, so can y'all uh, make sure y'all keep that conversation down low up there? So uh, numbers 26 and 1, Wa Yahaya. Akaria Maha Salak Hamaga Pa Waya Amar Yahawa Ah Masha Wa Al Ala Aizar Bun Aharan Uh Hakahan La Amar verse two Sha Shawa Ath Raash Ko Aidath Bunyam Yasha Ella Madun Aishara Aishara Yum Shana Wama I La Laba Yath Aba Abathma Ko Yataza Tazaba Bayasha Allah, verse three. Why the bar, Masha, Wa Allah, Aizar, Hakahan, a thumb by Ira Bath, Mawa Ab, Ile, Yara Dun, Yar Roka, Salat, Yarok, Wa, La Amar, verse four. Mabun, Aishara Yum. Asha I Aisha I I Rayam Shana Wama Ila Kaashara Taza Wa Yahawa Atma Sha Wabanyam Yasha Allah Haya Tazayam Ma Aratiza Matazayam Um Land of Egypt verse five Ra Aubun Baka war, Yasha Allah, Bunyam, Ra Orban, Kana Wak, Masha Pakath, Haka Nakia, Lapala Wa, Masha Pakath, Hapa Laya, verse six. Laka Tazarun, Maka, Slak, Masha Pakath, Haka Taza. Haka Tazarwanya, Laka Rumya, Mashapa Kath, Haka Rumya. Verse 7. Alha Mashaka Mashapa Kath, Hara or Bunya, Waya Hayawa, Pakwad, Pakwadyaham, Shala Shah, Waara Bayam. Allah washa by ma a wak washa lashem verse eight. Wabunyam pala wa alaya ab. So like alaya ab verse nine. Wa bunyam alaya ab num wa ala wada thun wa aba yurum hawa a the thun wa aba. Yerum Quara Waya Hai Da Ashra Hatazawa Ayo Masha Wa Ayo Aha Run Bai Dath Quarak Baha Baha Taza Thumb Ayo Yahawa Verse Ten Wathapa Thak Haarataza Ath Paya Ha Wathaba Lai a thumb wa ath korak bama wath haida ba a ko ha ash ath kamashim wama athyam ayash wahaya wahayawa lanas. Verse 11. Wabunyam korak la a mathwa. Verse 12. Bunyam. Shamaiwan Lama Shapa Kathma La Num Wa Allah Mash Masha Pakath Hanum Wa Alaya Hanum 
wa alaya kan la yamyan masha pakath hayam hayamyan ya la la yakyan maka masha pakath ha yak yanya verse 13 lazarak masha pakath hazarakya lasha a wall masha pakath Hasha a wall ya, verse 14. Oha, oha, masha pa kaf, hasha, hasha ma anya, shunyam wa aisha, wa aisha ra yum, alap wa ma af yum, verse 15. Bunyam god, lama shapa kathma. La taza pa one, masha pa kath, ha taza pa one ya, la kag ya, masha pa kath, ha kag ya, la sha one ya, masha pa kath, ha sha one ya. Verse 16. La ai zanya. Verse 16. La aza. La a zanya masha pa kath ha a zanya la aria masha pa kath ha aria verse 17. La ara wad masha pa kath ha ara wadya la ara uh la ara it's like la ara alaya. This is verse 17. Ariely. Am I seventeen? No. Uh, yeah. Ha, no. La ara alaya. Yeah. Uh, Masha pakat ha ara alaya. Yeah. Ari is the one is the plural. I guess the other one is the singular. Verse eighteen. Alha Masha pakat banya God. Lapa quad yaham arabayim alap waka mash ma a wath. Verse 19. Bunyam yahawada ayr wa awa nun wa ya moth ayr wa a wamum. So like wa awa nun ba aratiza kana ain. Verse 20. Wa yahayawa. Banya Yahawada Lamasha Pakathma Lasha La Masha Pakath Hasha Lanya La Par Taza Masha Pakath Hapa Rataz Hapa Rataza Ya Lazarak Masha Pakath Haza Rakya verse twenty one Wayahayawa Banya Salak Banyam Pa oh, bunny. Oh, yeah. Sons. The sons is 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I see now. Um <laughs> uh Bunyam Parata Parataza Therese Laka Taza Run Masha Masha Pakat. Haka Taza Ranya Lakha Mawal Hamasha Slak Masha Pakath Hakama Walya verse twenty two Alha Masha Pakath Yahawada Lapa Quad Yaham Shasha Washa Bayam Alap Waka Mash Ma a Wath verse twenty three Bunyam Yash Yeah Huh? Yeah, uh, Yash Shakar. No, so like not Yash Shakar, Khan. Yash Shakar. Yeah, Yash and then Shah and then Kar. Lama Sha Pakathma Thawa Lai Masha Pakath Hathawa Laya Lapa Wa Masha Pakath. Hapa one ya, verse twenty five. Laya sha 
wab masha pakath haya shabya lashama run uh yeah lashama run masha pakath hashama runya verse 25 oha masha pakath yash yash shakar lapa kwadyaham araba ai washasha yum alap washa lash ma'awath verse 26 banya salat banyam zabawa banyam 26 of the sons banyam zabawa lun lamasha pakathma lasa rad masha pakath hasa radya la ala one masha pakath ha a lanya la yak la ala masha pakath yasha sla ya ha yak la ala ya ha yak la ala ha ha yak la ala ya is that jahalis yeah Jaily, Jaily lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse twenty-seven. Olha, Masha Pakath, Hazaba, Walanya, Lapa, Quadyaham, Shashiyam, Alap, Waka Mash, Maawath. Verse twenty-eight. Bunyam, Yawa Sap, Joseph. Uh, La Masha Pakath Ma. Man, mana sha wa a pariam, right? From Manessa and yeah, that's what the Bible bump into. Ifu wa a wa a pariam. Hmm? I think I checked the interlinear and said bana ya. Three letters. Twenty six, twenty six. Yeah. Bana. Uh, yeah, but it has those things on it, so maybe they took. Yeah. Uh, so I'm at 29. Yeah. Banyam mana sha lama ka yar masha pakath hama ka yarya wama ka yar hawala yad af gala gala ai la gala aid masha pakath hagala aidya verse 11 um verse 30. alha banyam gala aid gilead yep uh aya 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 zar was it jizar yeah aya 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 zar masha pakath what do you say yeah Jesus. Haaya I Zarya Laka Lak Masha Pakath Haka Lakya verse twenty verse thirty one. Wa I Slak Wa uh Shar Ya Allah uh Azrael again. Uh Masha Pakath Haa Shai Haa Shar Alaya Washa Kam Masha Masha Pakath Hasha Kanya Hasha Kamya, verse 32. Washama ya die, Masha Pakath Hashama ya die, Waka par, Masha Pakath Haka parya, verse 33. Wataza lapkad bun kapar la ah hayawa lawa bunyam kaya um ba. Bana wath wash washam bana wath taza lapkad maka la wana air gag kaga la malaka wathara taza verse 34 alha masha pakath mana sha wapa kwadyaham shanyam waka mashim alap washa by ma Athwa salat ma'a wath 35 Olha banyam aparyam lama 
Shapakathma, Lasha Wath, Lak, Masha Pakath, Hasha Thalakya, Labakar, Masha Pakath, Habakaria, Latha Kun, Masha Pakath, Hatha Kanya, verse 36. Wa Oha Bunyam, Sha Wath, Lak, La I Run, Masha Pakath, Ha I Runya, verse 37. Oha Mashapakath Bunyam Aparyam Lapakwadyaham Shunyam Washa Lashim Alap Waka Mash Maawath Alha Bunyam Yawa Sap Lama Shapakathma verse thirty eight Bunyam Bunyan Bunyamyan Bunyamyan Lama Shapakathma Laba Lai Mashapakath Habala Habalaya La Asha La Asha Bol Masha Pakath Ha Shabolya La La Ak Yuram Masha Pakath Ha Ak Yuramya verse thirty nine Lash La Shap Wapam Masha Pakath Hasha Wa Pum Pumya Laka Wapum Mashapa Kath Haka Wapumya verse forty. Wayahayawa Bunyam Balai Arad Wana I Wana I Mun Mashapa Kath Ha Radya Lana I Mun Mashapa Kath Hai Hana Ain Anya verse forty one. Oha Bunyam Bunyam Lama Shapakathma Wapa Kwadyaham Kama Shah Waara Bayam Alap Washasha Maa Wath Verse 42 Oha Bunyam Dun Lama Shapakathma Lashawa Kum Mashapakath Hashawa Salak Hasha Wa kamya oha masha pakath dun lama sha pakath ma was 43. Ko masha pakath hasha wa kamya lapa kwadyaham arabai arabai washa washa sha yum alap wa arabai ma wath verse 44. Bunyam Ashra la Masha Pakathma la Ya Mana Masha Pakath Waya Mana la Yashwaya Masha Pakath Ha Yashwaya Labara Yai Masha Pakath Habara Yaya verse 45 La Bunyam Bara Yai Laka Bar Masha Pakath Haka Baria Lama Lakya Allah Masha Pakath Hasha Lak Salak Hama Lak Ya Allah Ya Verse 46 The Mali Malkaklets Washam Washam Bath Ashra Sharak Verse 47 Sarah uh, Oha Masha Pakath Bunya Mashra La Pakwadyaham Shala Shah Waka Mashyam Alap Waa Rabai Maa Tha Maa Wath Verse 48 Bunyam Napa Tholya O Napatali Lama Shapakathma La Yak Taza all Masha Pakath Ha Yak Ha Yak Taza all Ya Laga Wanya Masha Pakath Haga Wanya verse forty. Cut, yeah. Verse forty nine. 
Laya Tazar, Masha Pekath, Haya Tazaria, La Shalom, Masha Pekath, Hasha Lumya, verse 50. Olha, Masha Pekath, Nabatholia, Lama Shapakathma, Wapa Kwadyaham, Kamasha, Waara Bayam, Alap, Waara Bay, Ma'a Wath, verse 51. Oha Pakwa Wadya Banyam Yasha Allah Shasha Ma'awath Alap Wa Alap Shabai Ma'awath Washa Lashim verse 52. Waya the bar Yahawa al Masha La Amar. Lord speak of Moses saying, La A La O verse 53. La Oha Thaka Lak Haaratiza Bana. Kala bash like Bama Sapar Bama Sapar Shama Wath verse fifty four Larab Tharaba Nakalak Slak Nakalathwa Walama I Walama I Walama eight Thama I Yat Na Naka Lafwa Ayash Lapya Pakwadyawa Yathun Naka Lafwa verse fifty five Ak Bagawa Roll Yaka Lak Ath Haratiza Lashama Wath Mata Wath Abathma Yamna Kalwa fifty six yeah, Yana Kalwa. Verse 56. Ayo Piya Haga wa Haga wa roll Thaka Lak Naka Lafwa Ba Yun Rab Lama Ait. Verse 57. Wa Oha Pakwa Wadya. Haloya, oh, ah, Lama Sha Lama Sha Lama Sha Pakathma Laga Rashwan Masha Pakath Hagara Shanya Lakwa Hath Masha Pakath Hakwa Hathya Lama Raya Masha Pakath Hama Raya, verse fifty eight. Oha Masha Pakath. Lawyer, Masha Pekath, Hala Bunyam, Masha Pekath, Haka Baranya, Masha Pekath, Hama Kolya, Masha Pekath, Hama Washya, Masha Pekath, Hakwa Rakya, Wakwa Hath, Wa Salak Hawa Lad, Ath, I, I'm a Rum, or 59. Family. That's all that line to linear. Yeah. I can see it, man. <laughs> Fifty nine. Washum uh shaf I'm a rum Yawa Kurbar was like Yawa Kurbad Bath Lawyer Ashra Lada Da Yala Da Athal La La Lawyer Bama Tazarium Wathalad La I Maram Ath Aha Run Wa Ath Masha Wa Ath Mara Yum Akathma Verse sixty. Huh? Sixty. Yeah, sixty. Why uh why you wa Lad La Aha Run Ath Nada ba ath abaya salak aba yawa ath ala ay zar wa ath ayatha mar tamar. Sixty one. Waya maf nadab wa abaya salak wa aba yawa baha kwaraya bum ash zara la na la panya yahawa. Uh, verse 62. Wahaha, so like Waha, Wahayawa, 
Salat. Wayahayawa. Pakwadyaham Shalat Shah. Wa Aishara Yam. Alap Kal Zakar. Maban Kadash. Wa Ma Aywa Kaya La'a. Hatha Pakwadwa. Basa. Bathawak, Banyam Yasha Alak, Yala Ah, Nathan, Laham, Naka La, Bathawak, Banyam Yasha Allah. Verse 63. So there's month. So we had Kadash for the month. Allah, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of link it up. You can kind of look at it hard enough. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. Uh, Oha Pakwa Wadya Masha Wa Ala Aizar Haka Hun Ashira Pakwadwa No, yeah, I was looking at this word Pakwadwa Ath Banya Yasha Ala Ba Arabath Mawa Ab Ayo Yara Dun Yarakwa. Verse 64. Uh, yeah. Waba all Waba all ha la ha haya ayash mapa kuwadya masha wa aha run haka hun ashira pukwadwa ath banyam yasha ala bamada bar sa yun ya. Verse 65, last verse. Kaya Amar Yahawa Laham Mawath Yam Ya Mathwa Bamadabar Wala uh Wala Ah Nawa Thar Mahan Ayash Kya Am Kalabun Yapa na Waya Shawai Bun no one Waya Shawai Oh, why you're right? Yeah, because you know, sometimes, uh, oh, Joshua, Yahweh, yeah, no, no, but it's Yahweh, yeah, is and which is why the and and Yahweh, I don't have a ha, there's no ha here, it's just why ya, why ya, why ya, why they don't have Yahweh, it should be, okay. yeah, and yours is Yahweh, yeah, you have a ha in there. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. I don't. I don't have the. Uh, you don't have that. I don't know. It's the. Uh, maybe it's the first edition. Twenty-six. Oh, that's the first edition. Well, yeah. You know. Can it look in yours? What verse? So you got the second edition? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. last verse, third from the last word. What do you have? Yeah. Um. <laughs> um oh, yeah. Pronounce it. No, no, so each each letter what you have. Oh, I have yeah, I was shy. So it's the same? Wow. It's the same, right? I said that. Yeah. That's, that's 26, 26, 65, right? Are you being Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. 65? Yeah, it's the same. What page is that? 589. Oh. Mommy, I think we got 589. How's that 589? Yeah, how was I? I have the same thing here as here. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, but you read it in the, uh, the modern Hebrew. Yeah. But I have the same as I have here. Yeah, I'd have to go see if it's the same <laughs> other places too. Yeah. I have. Yeah, I was shy. Yeah. It should be Yahweh shy. Yeah. Because in the book of Joshua, is Yahweh shy, but it's for Joshua, you know? Yeah. So, number. You don't know where it's 64. Just go right here, but it's 64. 65. 
Go Which goes what? Sixty-five verses. You in Numbers twenty-six? All right. All right. So number 26 and one, it says, and it came to pass after the plague that Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to, to war in Israel. All right. So at this time, once uh, the Most High had stopped the plague from killing Israel, who was following after the Moabites, Baal Peor, and Phinehas went and killed the man Zimri and his Midianitish woman, uh, Cosby, because of what was going on and sacrificing to strange gods. Now the Most High is ready for war, right? So he says to go and take the num, take the sum of the congregation. How many men from out of Israel, twenty year old and upwards, are are able to go to war? Yeah, well, Kanan. Um, this phone is right up there. It's probably his phone he's looking for. Okay, it's phone. Yeah, it's sitting up there. It's sitting up there. Yeah. No, no, I, I was trying to find out of the law of concubine if it was here. Yeah. The law of concubine. The law of, you know, concubine. To go with what we read in the last chapter? Yeah, that was in the last chapter. Yeah, no, no. yeah the Midianite woman was in the last chapter. What we're reading here now in the in the 26th chapter is about taking the sum of the children of, of Israel, the men who's able to go to war, right? right? Um, so I'm going to read this. So now when it says all that are able to go to war, now you may have some who are above 20 years old that may have some ailments or, you know, issues, circumstances that prevent them from going to war, right? right? In the law, when you read in Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, I think it is, Deuteronomy 24 and no 24 and 5 Deuteronomy 24 and 5 24 oh okay yeah I'm thinking about the flat ones that's for the priests mm -hmm. I can't go to camp because I just got a wife. Right. <laughs> 24. We say Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy 24 and 5. Yeah, And then you can read that. Okay. When you got that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 20 and 5 said, When a man had taken a you shall see, you shall be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his life he has taken. Right. So when they're now going and doing this sum, the number, the census of, of those who are above 20 years old 
to go to war. Now, if somebody who just now got a, a wife, he can't go, right? right? Even if you want to go, the law says, no, you got to stay back and deal with your wife, with right? Your wife. To kind of build that bond, that union at first, just being married. Um, you got to be just getting married, right? right. It says, it, that's what it says. If a man have taken a new wife, he shall not go out, to, go out the world. From the time that he's married to taking his wife, one year has to go by before he's able. to go to go to war in america it's 17 years old with consent 18 years old without consent right so if you're 17 years old and you want to go to war you still classified as being under age your parents have to sign off and say yeah he we, we're allowing him to go if you're 18 years old you consider now legally obligated or legally have your own choice to say i want to go and join the military Okay. Right. But for Israel, it was 20 years old. Okay. Right. That you now had to have the minimum age requirement. And then with those stipulations before you can go. Because you have that a lot where you have these young, these young brothers, you know, and I'm talking about the lineage, but like a lot of, you know, whether it be Ishakar, Judah, Benjamin, whatever, they get into the military and they're in there single and they get married and then they get deployed. Right. Now they 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 off the war right there away from their wives. They their wives and here they away for about a year or maybe two doing one or two tours. Right. Right. So then what happens? Now the, the, this is supposed to be somebody who you now married. Now that woman, that wife has not fully been, you know, bonded with you. Like y'all haven't set a foundation. Now she start dealing with other people and other people start coming around. And that's what happened. And then you have it, you see a lot of times they depicted in movies where, um, I forgot what that movie where they did it, where uh, they was out deployed somewhere and this guy's watching a, a, a videotape, his wife sends him a videotape, but it's a videotape of her cheating on him, right? Out of, out of, out of anger because now she, you know, she back home doing everything else and they only like two, three months in and he gone. Right then, you start thinking, I don't know what he's doing when he's out there and all that. You know how the worldly mentality yeah, is. He's a girlfriend. Let's get to him. Uh -huh. Let's get to him. Exactly. Then yeah, the chitter chatter start coming in. He ain't out there. You think he's over here? He ain't doing. Ain't doing. He out there doing what God knows what with all the women out there. Right. And then, then you got other men who are uh, trying to hit on and deal with the women. <laughs> I seen that. I seen that movie where uh, it was like a European movie where it was certain guys who just made it so that they could never go to war. Mm -hmm. Like they always had an issue with like a, some kind of a illness, a broken hip or knee or something like that. And all the men went out the war and they was left back to go and be with all their women. So it was one guy who came and he was around when this was going on. And then he went, to, he went and got deployed okay. to the war on the front line. And then he told all the soldiers like, yo, these men is back there dealing with our wives. We got to hurry and get this wall and get off the front line. But when he said that, that lost the confidence of the war because now they ain't on, they ain't on the enemy. They're like, yo, man, I got to get back to my, my family. I got to get back to my wife. So people just started, you know, retreating from the war on the front line. It was made to be like a, 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 a dramatic comedy. But that's the reality of times where you don't, you know, have that time to to be with your wife and to set up a foundation to build a family and you get sent out. Um, so the most I had that in, in, the, in the law so that uh, we wouldn't have those kind of circumstances. But then again, it still goes beyond just this because even if you do go out, you ain't gonna have, you shouldn't have no other men trying to get with your wife because the law, according to the law, that's wicked, right? But most people don't care about that. What your man got to do with me? Like we make all them songs and all them doggone things about, yeah, what your man got to do with me? Or he ain't here, she ain't here now. So what? Right? right? Yeah. Then you, then you, uh, you get, you know, weak, or you yeah, fall to, and then you start dealing with the, um, the individual, the person, mm -hmm. right? You get it down later. Right. Right. And then now, and now. You become a person scorned or a person who's felt that they've been betrayed and now you facilitate and keeping that same cycle going on with the you take vengeance out and this person and you just so that it's just a whole messed up setup here where this kind of covers all the bases 
or covers all the bases for us, but we didn't implement it the proper way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just quickly, Proverbs 7 and 19. It says, I'm going to read it quickly. For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> he had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Mommy. Right. Proverbs 7 and 19. When the woman started to, you know, Probably, you know, go out, you know, mm -hmm. that, that her husband is going on you know, a long journey. So I'm gonna read that verse again, Deuteronomy 24 and 5. When a man have taken a, a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall be he charged with any business, right? So now he's not, he shouldn't be held. This is back to Deuteronomy 24 and 5. Not only should he not just go out to war, but he shouldn't be held with many um, important responsibilities that now takes him away from that. Because, you know, when you are given important businesses, it causes you to be away for long periods of time. So it's almost like you still deployed at war. You away spending 10 to 12 hours and coming back home for a short period of time. And you can't now they'll build your foundation with your um, with your family. Yeah. So. This is the same thing. He at one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he have taken. All right. Back in the Middle Ages, them guys made like chastity belts and stuff. You know, put chastity belts. Yeah, some of them had put chastity belts on. Remember when they got to the bathroom? I ain't worked that out. It was the way you get a hold of the shoe. Well, that's the you worked. Oh, so okay, we got here. All right, so let's go back to Numbers 26. Mm -hmm. You know what? Numbers what? 26 and 1. 26 and I think I'm at 2. I'm going to read 2 and then move on. Okay. So take the sum of the children of the con take the the sum of all the congregation and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war. You could also write down for this, the first chapter of Numbers talks about the same thing. Numbers 1, um, 2, to 3. Numbers 1, 2 to 3. You can just write it down. We have to read it because it talks about the same thing. Okay. Numbers chapter one, verses two to three. Okay. Yeah, it goes for the same second verse. Numbers one, chapter one, verses two to three. And what we just read again? Numbers twenty. Six. No, no, so like 24 and five. 24. All right, so we have verse six, uh, verse three. three yeah. <laughs> and Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went, which went forth out of the land of Egypt, right? So taking this sum is different from the Most High said, we shall not number Israel, right? We're not supposed to try to attempt to number all Israel because the Lord said we're like the sand of the sea, sure, or we're like the stars in heaven, which can't be numbered. So now for those who go and try to number or take a census of all the tribes of the nation of Israel, it's like what? It's like you're now going against the, the statement of the Most High, where he said we're like the, the uh, heavens that can't be numbered, the stars that can't be numbered, but then you go try to number them, it's like I'm trying to one-up the Most High. But this one is saying you're going to take the sum of the men 20 years old and upward. So that's not all Israel, that's just a portion of the nation of Israel. 
Then there's even uh, uh I forget the top the scripture off the top, like when the Lord gives um boundaries on when you could be a so well, how long you could be a soldier, when you could be a priest. So, like a priest can go from a certain age to a certain age. <laughs> right. Soldier can start at 20 to go to a certain age. Right. So that you know, you're not gonna be 80 years old out there saying you're going out to war on the front line of 50. There's a certain age time frame for you to be doing this right from 20 years old not with Rabban or Reuben the eldest son of Israel the children of Reuben Hanak of who cometh the family of the Hanakites right of Palu Palalu the family of the Palaluites of Hezron the family of the Hezronites of Carmi the family of the Carmites right so this is where you can look at when you go into uh, lineage, when you go into bloodline, when you go into seed, how the most high is specific and having these names in the Bible so that we can trace, right? Not only trace, but show that nationality is deriving from a man, right? So it talks about these people, uh, Hanak of who cometh the family of the Hanakites, right? So that's a family. The people that come from Palu, the family of the Paluites, right? Because they come from that man and his lineage. Right. So now, as they're taking these numbers from that person's family tree, you now see that they're called that. Now, these all these people is still Israelites, even right. though you have the Paluites and the Hamakites and all them. They're just sub families within the one big tribe and nation of Israel. Of Israel. Family, family. Families of families. That's like what is in uh in uh in Genesis when it talks about um each that the um, Abraham would have a company of nations, right? A company of nations would come from a, from him. So like each tribe is a nation in itself, right? So when you look at it. Go down to Puerto Rico, and they spread all over the place, right? But that island, as small as it may seem, you may think, okay, well, you got a little small island, but we over here in this big. No, Ephraim, that's what they they consider their home base. But Ephraim is all over the place. You go in the same thing with Benjamin. Benjamin is all over the place. Ishikar, Ishikar. You look down in Mexico. Mexico is bigger than what you look at as far as for a landmass in right. Puerto Rico. But then you got Mexico, Mex Ishikar all over West Coast, right. all over California, all over Texas. And those are the two biggest states that we have, and they're flooded all over them. Yeah, South America, too. Exactly. So now when you start looking at nations of these tribes, you're like, man. Exactly. I, up in Seattle. I was up in Seattle and they're there. Right? So it's like, wow, you have each tribe spread all over the place but each tribe combined make one nation and where you're going to be able to to number and count all of them but they have we becomes families of families within each tribe and that's what it's reading here for those that's now taking the sum of the census of who's going to war so i mean like like we say if you go to you know puerto rico or jamaica or whatever just had, you find different names of people have different names, different families, you know, or big certain families are, but mm -hmm. still, you know, under the same tribe. The main tribe. Right. So, um, we in a sense, we're trying to find out what family you are, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to go and find a spouse, you're going to find out what family are you, so you make sure you don't marry somebody within that same family. Right, but that's what, that was what, what was important of knowing your, your, your lineage and your, uh, your family line. That's like when Toby went to go and see me, his his family, his wife's family. They said, "Where are you from?" Oh, my father is named such and such. Right. Oh, I know him, and he's of a good name, right? You just didn't just show up, and nobody knew or be able to trace where you're from because then yeah, it would cause confusion. Right. So you wanted to at least provide, yo, my father is this, my grandfather is this. We come from this tribe of people. We live in this region. So now it puts perspective in everything that that you're doing with based on what you're talking. 
from. Right, because that's what type of people we take. That's what type of people we were. We were about family, as mm -hmm. far as for lineage. Um, so I'm gonna just read. I quoted this, but I'm gonna read this Hosea one and ten. Genesis 35 and 11. Genesis what I quoted to? Yeah, about the company of nations. Wow. Genesis 35 and 11 about the company of nations. And Genesis Hosea 1 of Israel. So Esau trying to build a census. Mm -hmm. know, you know how many people we are. Yep. Jose okay. one and ten. And I know it was twelve. I mean yeah, twelve. Next door, twelve. White man, so I'm looking it up. We look kids, man. Twelve. <laughs> you get down four riches, man. Eighteen. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to count them. So he ain't see. Jose one and ten. So Hosea 1 and 10, it says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, <clears throat> which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said them, said unto them, ye are not my, my people. They said unto them, ye, right? So the first half of that shows that the Most High has us so plenteous that we can't be numbered or measured to be specifically accounted for, right? And then the second half of that talks about in the place <clears throat> where it says that you're not the Most High's people, there it is also going to be said that we are the sons and daughters, actually, when you read other verses, of the living power, meaning like right now here today, in the land that we're in, we're told that we're every other name under heaven other than what we are. But now the Most High sending out prophets to go out there and teach our people who we are according to Scripture and give ourselves true history so that we can now identify ourselves as being the sons and daughters of the Most High. All right. So that was Hosea 1 and 10. Let's go back to Numbers 26. It's like a bug. All right, so numbers 26, and we at six now. Of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites. Of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites. And that and they that were numbered of them were pardon me, 40 and 3,730, mm. right? So these were all the men of war from Reuben 20 and up. Not counting women and children. Not counting women and children. Not, oh, not counting women and children and not counting the men under them, right? So you had to put that all in perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. If you was 19 years old, you wasn't going. 19 and a half, you wasn't going. Mm. You had to be 20 years old and up and free from all your other duties. Israeli army, they just say everybody from 18. Once you reach 18, you gotta join the military. Right. Oh, man, I think it's men and women. Check it out, because I think I saw that on the news uh, a few years back that men and women were obligated to serve, I think, one, at least one year in, in the military. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think so. Um, they depend in our land. <laughs> Verse 8. And the sons of Pelu, Iliad, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram, Abiram, I should say, which were famous in the congregation who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they strove against the Lord, right? So you read about this in Numbers, the 16th chapter. Number 16. Huh? Number 16. Famous, right? Yeah. Not a, not a good famous. <laughs> Number 16, actually, uh, you can write down number 16, 1 to 30. 1 to 30. 1 to 30. Yeah, because it's the whole story. Remember, this? they, they, they came with the, um, yeah, they came with the, uh, they came almost with the same, line as Miriam and Aaron did is the most high only dealing with one person right mm -hmm. when you're reading in, in uh, number 16 and 3 it says and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them ye take too much upon you saying all the congregation are holy every one of them and the Lord is among them wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord right mm -hmm. it's like listen y'all y'all putting too much on yourselves we all are holy people so all of us can deal with the most high. All of us can take that position. Why do you have to lift yourself selves above everybody? Right? And then the most high came <laughs> and dealt with them and had the earth swallow them up. Right? So right. But they stood because it was mainly their heart. Their heart wasn't right to try to lift themselves up above what they needed to do. Same thing in the Apocrypha when you're reading the Maccabees, when the Judah. Judah and the men was going out to war and the Most High was, was working with them, fighting with them. You had men who was like, man, we're going to go out and get us a name like Judah. Like he can't be the only one to get a name. We're going to go get a name. And when they went out to war, the Most High had them where they all died because they were not of that righteous seed because they didn't do, they didn't do it of a, of a pure heart. But, um, that in Exodus. What's that? We're looking for. Or Jethro came to Moses and say, "As if you take on too much for you yourself." Right. Somewhere in Exodus. Okay. Yeah. But. So that that one was that one was wisdom as far as from Moses setting up people to deal with matters because he was dealing with all the matters, the small to the great, and then he was like, "No, set up you know different uh, captains and different men to go and handle those matters." Right. So it's not it won't be a burden because he was he was kind of like overworked. Not good. All right. So you can find that and I'll, and then we'll highlight it when we get to it. So reading back on to numbers 26. You found it? Yeah. Numbers eight. Uh, Exodus. 1817. Mm -hmm. Make it read a little further up. Exodus 18, verse 14. Oh, 13. What? No, Exodus 18, verse 13, come down. All right, read that. Yeah, you pull, you pull it. <laughs> okay, Exodus 18, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the even, evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing 
that thou doest to the people. Why sittest thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? Verse 15, and Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. Verse 16, when they have a matter, they come unto me and I judge between one and another and I do make them know the stat the statutes of God and his laws. Verse 17, and Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Verse 18, thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Right. So that was dealing with the, the, the judgments between the people. But what Korah and Dathan and them wanted to do, they wanted to be the ones that go stand between, between them and the Most High. He's like, we all holy people. Why? We can't come up and do those things. And then the Most High came and seen the, their heart. And he dealt with them and had the earth swallow them up. So, yeah, I gave that was numbers 16, 1 to 33, if you read that whole story. I'm not going to read it all because we read it some months back. All right. Reading back on in verse 9 again. And the sons of Eliab, Eliab, and uh, Nemuel and Dathan and Abiram, which is the which is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that the when that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign, right? So not only did the earth swallow them up, then you have certain men who got burnt up, right? Right, because of what they sought to accomplish at that time with wicked hearts. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not, right? So they didn't totally all die, right? It says the sons of Shemaiwan or Simeon after their families, Nemuel, the families of the Nemuelites, of Jamin the family of the Jaminites, of Jacob, the family of the Jaconites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Sheol, the family of the Sheolites. These are the families of the Simeonites, 20 and 2,200, right? So, you know, each one, imagine 20 something thousand men that is now uh, I don't know what the total number. It probably happened on. Uh, they have it online. U.S. military. Yeah, no, not only in U.S. military. They had it online um, of all the nations. Their estimated total number of soldiers, and then they go into like say tanks that they may have, uh, jets that they may have, you know, all of that. But I remember. Uh, I forget who I know. I don't remember if U.S. is number one or two or three, because you got like China there. They got a lot of people, but they don't have a lot of, um, yeah, they don't have a lot of like um, tanks and things that other nations may have. Other nations may have like a whole bunch of these different weapons and arsenals, but fewer soldiers, right? But they they had. I think I had it bookmarked one time um, to kind of uh, keep a track. But now when you're looking at this. And you start seeing, we started with what, uh, forty and three thousand over. I mean, forty three thousand over here. You got twenty two thousand over here. Um, I think just those are the first two, Reuben and Simeon together. Forty three thousand, twenty two. Looks like at least that's sixty some thousand right there. Right. Now we're getting into Gad. In verse 15, the children of God or Gad after their families, Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Hagag, Hagi, the family of the Hagagites, of Shunai, the family of the Shunites, of Oznai, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the 
he writes. I'm verse 16. Well, I'm going to 17 now. Of Arod, or Arad, because it's a little thick, of Arad, the family of the Aradites, of Irali, Irali, the family of the Irelites, or Irelites, or Relites. Yeah. These are the families of the children of God or Gad, according to those that were numbered of them 40,500. 40, Six something. So we got, I'm going to keep a tally. Does it, see, does it give it the total at the end? Yep. All right. So there we have it. Yep. So, um, Verse 19, the sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan, right? So, hmm? Huh? Right. No, remember this is Aaron Onan when you read back in like uh Genesis 38. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And, and he was supposed to go into his brother's wife and it and he didn't and it spilled on the, and he spilled his seed and everything. That's that he could be named here, but he didn't he died, yeah. Right. Wow. Seat for his brother, right? So it says in 20, and the sons of Judah after their families were of Shilah, the family of the Shilanites, Shilanites, of Perez, the family of the Parasites, of Zerah, the family of the Zerhites, and the sons of Perez were of Hezron and the families of the Hezronites, of Hamul, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those that were numbered of them, three score and 16,500. Three score, so that's 60 something thousand, right? So right now, they had the most. Yeah, Judah. Judah so far has the most of one tri of the tribe so far. So this is forty. Let me write this down. Reuben at forty-three seven thirty. Gad had forty thousand. Five hundred Judah sixty. Judah has a sixteen thousand. Judah has a big land mass, and Manasseh have a big land mass too. So that's seventy six and five hundred. Oh, you're right. Are you right? Yeah, because it's three score and sixteen thousand. So that's seventy six. And 500. Now, go oh, Judah. Verse 23. Of the sons of Ishakar after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolalites, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Ishakar according to those that were numbered of them three score and four thousand and three hundred. They almost came close. Six, four, five, six. six sixty four thousand three hundred. So far, seventy six five, right. It says of the sons of Zebulon after their families of Zered and the families of the Sardites, 
of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jehil, Shalak, J Jalil, Jalael, the family of the Jalaelites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, Zebulonites, according to the number of those of those, according to those that were numbered of them, three score thousand five hundred. All right, verse 28, the sons of Joseph, after their families were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Makir, the family of the Makirites, and Makir begat Gilead. Of Gilead come the families of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites of Helek, the family of the Helekites, of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, of the Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites, and Hefer, the family of the Heferites, and Zola, uh, Zeloph, Zelophehad, the son of Ephraim had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Maka and Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tizra. Right now, what's interesting is this is the census of all that was taken. Right now. The story of the Zelophite, we didn't get to that yet. That's the next chapter when they had um, um, the daughter of this man had daughters and no sons. And it started talking about the inheritance. How do you reckon the inheritance when now you have women who are going to take marriage or marry some other man? And what happens if these women who are of this tribe marry somebody from another tribe? That land then becomes important to their inheritance. Then it's going to be all confusion. So that's what you're going. That's what we're going to read uh, three weeks from now about that whole storyline and what the Most High's law was imputed for that to be remedied, right? So that's what you're reading about here. That's the next chapter. Read it again. And uh, Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Malk, Mala. And Noah and Hogla and Milka and Terza. Numbers 36. Numbers, thir Numbers 36 and 9. I think that goes into it also. Number 36 and 8. Yep. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father. Right. That the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his father. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Right. So you started at eight? Yeah. So like what you said, you know, instead of all the Judah men gonna run over to Issachar and Issachar men gonna run to another tribe. So, you know, you gotta stay within your tribe. Yep. And with the land, so the, because the land can't move from, you know, extend up or whatever, you just right. gotta stay within that tribe. Because basically, like right now, a lot of people, you know, most people would stay within their own countries and language and you know, with a land, language, culture, and everything. You know, most people do that. Right. Some people go to another, you know, another tribe or something like that. You know, but right. most people stay within their their culture, their land, language. Right. But see, and and over here is 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 kind of a passe thing because. Specifically with Israel, um, as a nation, we don't really own no land or property here, right? V very, you know, very few far in between. Do we go out or have the opportunity to go out and pur purchase property, right, or purchase land? 
but it's it's not in a sense of you know passing down an inheritance it's just about investment to make money somebody's going to come and try to use it want to make money off of it so on and so on which is not a problem but in our homeland when the most high divided up the lots that we're going to see later on when we get further along in the in the old testament especially around the time of joshua when he started to divide up the lot it was not just something that we did it was like all right this is what the most high now is engineering based on the tribes right split up the tribe have one over here one over here because they got more over them and they went that was all guided by the spirit of the most high and once that was instituted that was it that was what the lord set up and then you had the levites spread throughout the different suburbs but that now became our inheritance it's like okay this is the land of, of zebulon right so now you're in the land of Zebulon, it meant something, right? It meant something that you now own certain properties or you have certain land or you own that cave or you own that thing, whatever it was, you own that. If you have, you know, actual land and property um, that you can just continue to pass down. So now you have some people who come over here and then uh, they'll try to make enough money to go back to their homeland and buy property, right? They want to have, they want to have some, type of equity in their own, own in their own homeland because if they don't what usually happens is the heathens come and they take the dog on property and they own it now you got heathens in your land that own your own your land or your property and you don't you don't own much and that's what they showed on they showed on uh the guy who died um the guy who goes travel places and eats anthony anthony was his Cor corbain the one who died committed suicide he used to travel all over the place eating trying the different foods during the cultures but he, he went to i think it was jamaica and he showed how um you know how the land is so you know vibrant and they have you know all the different resources and things that they use and he was showing how the natives live but then it flipped to where esau and them come in and they start building all these vacation properties and they start taking it for themselves and now it's eminent domain that they own it so people who lived there for a while now is cut off from going to that location they can't go there no more right they got to go to another public area but a lot of the public areas is being taken over to put hotels there and make resorts and it's just for tourism people who pay money even the beaches sometimes we just yeah. have public beaches yeah the beaches are going to like, take over the best part of the beach yeah that's exactly yeah, what they show you know right so now imagine if you had if you had land and that's something that you did like you own that house or you own that property and this is something that your family was doing for for decades for centuries that you going down and you have this area that you could this public area where that's your culture now all of a sudden you can't do that no more because heathens came in and took took ownership of your land and you don't have no rights to it no more yeah they come with money and yeah. it's like oh instead of passing to my 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 children children yeah oh they come with money really wow yeah. i take the money buy the house and uh, what happened yep yeah. what was it we again now we're on verse uh we on verse 28 no we on verse 34 now i read 33 we're at 34. 34 okay right it says these are the families of manessah and those that were numbered of them fifty and two thousand and seven hundred all right so this is manessah fifty two thousand seven hundred all right verse 35 these are the sons of ephraim after their families of shoot shoot the law the family of the shoot the lot shoot the lights shoot all heights of big beaker the family of the baccarites of tehan the family of the tehanites and these are the sons of the shoot the law of esrin the family of the aaronites so like let me read that again and these are the sons of the these are the sons of, these are the sons of Shutala of Aaron, the family of the Aaronites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. 
These are the sons of Joseph after their family. So they split them up. Joseph first did with Manasseh, then he did with Ephraim, and then they come back and put them together and said, these are the two sons of Joseph. So Judah, but Ephraim... So Judah is the biggest one so far, right? So far, still. 30 and 2,500. No. Right? 30 and 2,500 for Ephraim. Ephraim, the son of Joseph, not Ephraim Manasseh. Right. So now we at Benjamin. Benjamin, Verse 38, yeah. the sons of Benjamin after their families of Bela, the family of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Aharimites, of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela or Bela were Ard and Naam. Naaman. We used to have a brother in the school. Remember Naaman? Yeah. Remember Naaman? Back in the day? Y'all No? Uh Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites. And of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were 40 and 5,600. So, uh, I was just gonna put this up here. Because remember, in, um, in Matthew chapter one, the show Yahweh lineage mm -hmm. goes all the way back to David, you know? Mm -hmm. So we kept records, even the time of, um, you know, Matthew, the new One. Oh, one? Yeah. Is it one? No. Yeah, I forgot where that verse is at. Yeah, no, I, I remember it slightly of it, you know, that they, they, they couldn't show because yeah. maybe I have to check the record. Yeah. Oh, Ezra. Oh, is it Ezra? Ezra. Two. Should have remembered because this is when he came back to rebuild. Yeah, Ezra two. And. Ezra 2 and 59. Also, it's in uh, Chronicles, I think, too. Oh. Or Nehemiah. It's probably in, also in Nehemiah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Ezra 259. And I'm also going to think it's in Nehemiah. Because even sometimes people come in, come in, come in here and they're like, I don't know what tribe I am. You know? right. I don't know too much about my family or whatever. And so on and so forth. It might have been adopted or a thing like that, you know? Right. So it could be an offering. Right. Or an you, 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 you really don't know. Right. Answer, right. You know? Because now that, that, that played a part because if you come in from a certain tribe wanting to hold a certain office, you had to show your father's lineage before you could be able to be put in that position because it, let's just say if it wouldn't pertain to the sons of Aaron, you had to know that you come from which son to be able to perform what um, service. Same thing if you're now coming out of the line of the kings or if you're a porter or you're this and it comes out of this man and they had that right to perform that duty, you got to prove that you come from them. You just can't be some random person and say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Levite. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm next in line to be a high priest. <laughs> it's like, how do you know that? What do you prove? What was your lineage? What are your fathers? What are your forefathers? And you got no records. Like no one would want to put themselves in a situation where you would be putting a, a heathen in the position. Now, when I say heathen, I mean, or a stranger in the position. When I say stranger, I mean a stranger in a sense that if you are not given right to that position by law, by a bloodline or seed, you are a stranger to that. Oh, okay. You, if you could be, a, you could, you are Israel, but you are a stranger to fulfilling that that service. Good. 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 Like we just read in the last chapter, how Phinehas got the covenant of peace from the Most High from his seed forever. So now just some random is Levite just can't come up and say, yeah, I, I got the covenant of peace with me to be a priest in this order. Well, how do you know? Well, because I come from that line. Well, how do, show me where's the records? Your father. OK, his crime. Who? I right, cool. I can prove it. So now you in line to do that. Just some random person coming up and saying, yeah, that's me. If you can't prove it, then we can't put you there. You might well just be the guy, but you can't prove it. So we, we can't hold it as true. Just, just like now in the set, well, yeah, when John the Baptist, Ezra, Ezra 259. Ezra's in the Bible, E Z R A. Ezra. Oh. Right. You could you can go and cry the Lord and the Lord can tell you, but just from a rule of thumb, that's like if man is coming to you, right? And he just says, Yeah, I have it. So you don't you're not even involved in the most high now. This is just basic order where it's like, okay, we're now taking system because Ezra was rebuilding the um repairing the breaches and rebuilding Israel. So he had to know who, or they had to know who was who to go and perform that service. So now as people come in and they're saying, I'm this, it was like, nah, you can't prove that. You got you to gotta go over there. Now, later on, the most I could have revealed it to them or whatever, but in that moment, they just wasn't going to be hasty and just saying, okay, fine. You say you who you are? You just say you are? All right, cool. All right, fine. Go ahead. And that's just some some person, that's some wicked guy that just wanted to fulfill it, and he don't even supposed to be in that position. Ezra 259. All right, so now let's go back to Numbers 26 and Benjamin. So I'm at verse 42. These are the sons of Don after their families. Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of Shuhamites, according to those that were with, according to those that were numbered of them, were three score and four thousand and four hundred. Woo! Dan is up there, brother. Dan and I knocked Benjamin out the box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three score, four thousand, sixty four thousand and four hundred. Right now, Dan is in third behind Judah and Ishakar. 
All right. So now moving on to chapter uh, verse 44 of the children of Asher after their families of Jimna, the family of the Jimnites of Jesua, Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites of Bariah, the family of the Bariahites of the sons of Barah of Heber, the family of the Heberites of Melchiah, the family of the Melchiahites, and the number of the daughters, and the number of the daughter of Asher, Salak number, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them who were 50 and 3,400. We got Asher, 50, 3, 400. So it's, I think uh, Sarah, or sometimes we use that as a name over and over. Yeah. Or it's a R A. I think that's what it does in the book, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's A R A I, too. So now. But Sarah, S A R A. H. Yeah, S A R A. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Verse 47. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Forty-eight of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites of Shelem, the family of the Shelemites. These are the families of Naphtali according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were 40 and 5,400. So 45,400. Verse 451, these were the number of the children of Israel six hundred thousand and a third select six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty right so Judah had the most then Ishakar, then Dan, then Asher, then Manessa. Oh no, I skipped. So like I skipped. Yeah, the number. It wasn't uh is Judah. Dan, uh Judah. Dan, then Ishakar. Judah, Dan, then Ishakar, then Zebulon, then Asher, then Manasseh, then Benjamin, then Reuben. No, then Amthali, then Reuben. I got it all screwed up. I can't, can't go back and forth. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, man, the way I have it written, I'm all over the place with those numbers. But Needless to say, uh, that's 600,000 men, right? And 600,000 men plus uh, as an army of the nation of Israel. At this time. At this time, right? That was back then, 600,000 men mm -hmm. from the 12 tribes that can go out as an army with the Most High. Hey, hey, <laughs> right? Because it's just now we're just going out on our own. We're going out with the Most High. And then we also wrote with the priests. <laughs> Wait, he didn't count the priests? Uh-uh, they don't count the priests. They didn't count the priests. Right? So you see a force of 12 tribes with, and uh, you know, I wonder how, because you know sometimes when you when you see the uh, the nation where when they go to fight, they always have their flag. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we had um, stand, stand, we had our standard too. Standard but, is the flag, right? Yeah, but now you'll have it's like you'll have a flag for the nation, right? It's like if you if I, in my mind as I imagine it, 
it's like we're going out the war and we're marching together. So you'll have like say someone who's going with the flag of the nation, but within the, the armies, it's like you got all the tribes and each pocket of the tribes all has their standard. But the nation, the flag of the nation is in front, but then you got all 12 tribes of their standard that's 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 going with it too, right? So it's like, all right, boom, here, here comes Israel. And you see the flag of Israel. And then within the nation, you get Benjamin, and they're standing. There's Zebulon, and they're standing. There's Issachar, and they're standing. There's Judah, there's Ephraim, there's Manasseh. Everybody got their, their standard that represents their tribe. Right. And it's like, if you could, you probably have like, maybe you got like a split, a split flag. Like it's like my tribe and my nation. Mm -hmm. A tribe in my nation, a tribe in my nation, or something to that effect. You see how they, um, what's like, you see how they do it in like in certain games? They 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 show like a whole section of this section of army or whatever. This section of army, yeah. Yeah. And we have it somewhere in mm -hmm. I don't know where it is, but it showed that this section go up first and that go up. Not everybody does go up at one time like that, but different. Yeah. Time that we, we would go up. So when the nation see us marching like that, they get afraid. Right. It's a part of the script that say they get afraid because when they see us marching like that, it's like wow. Yeah. You know we. The army ain't got that many people. What's that? Today. Um. They got most um planes and stuff now. Carriers. They probably do. Well, we know back then, though. That's a lot of color people. Can they say something real quick? Mm -hmm. Oh, why not? He's <laughs> 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 terrible. No, no. Look, he's terrible. Durham 20 and, and 10. Durham 20 and 10. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. Verse 11. And it shall be if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. Not a self explanatory, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, if you're gonna come to a city, no, I've been talking to a man. Not, not, not just go and fight them and beat them down, you know, you're gonna go onto a city and proclaim peace first. Right. Yeah, you're gonna go peace first, right? So they're gonna be on you know unto us as servants. But if they want to come on war against us, then we gotta go on war against them and beat them down. Not right. just going and kill everybody in sight, just like that. Right. Unless the most I tell us to go and do it. All right, so I found it. So it was a uh it's uh, but this is kind of more than I want. This goes to the most powerful militaries in the world, and the uh, total amount of people that's in the military, or total amount of people in the population, the total military personnel, and their aircraft, fighter aircraft, tanks, so forth and so on. Um, of course, right now, the total um, one with the most population uh, in the army is uh, China. China. Yeah. Where they got a million people? No, they have two, over two million. Oh, yeah. Two wow. million in the actual uh, in their army, active, and then you have people who are on oh, on reserve. Do yeah. you have your reservists? They had like a half million in reserve. Um, U.S. had this was as I think they said last year. U.S. had about one point three, or let's say one point uh, four, active. And then about nine hundred inactive, like on reserve. On reserve, right? Now, when you put that in perspective, the armies is the army is made up of different nations of people, right? It's like China got majority of all Moab in their in their army. Then you got Elam. Elam has about I think after second most, 
right? As far as for military uh, within in India, and then you have the United States. But the United States is made up of a, a conglomerate. So if you took Israel out, if you took Israel out of that number, that number decreases drastically. <laughs> it decreases drastically, right? And then you start, you know, taking into account for this number that we're reading here is men, right? This the military is just not men; it's men and women. So when you look at that number, yeah, this it's is men, this yeah. is just men twenty years old and upward. Yeah. They go seventeen and up, men or women. Man. Oh, 17, oh, or the U.S. The U.S. Yeah, yeah, seventeen up, yeah. seventeen with percent. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people graduated high. Some people graduate seventeen years old in high school. I graduated seventeen in high school because my birthday was late. Oh, okay. But um, this is still a this is still a, a large number of just men at twenty and up. Because they started back at like seventeen, you probably get like another. You could probably get another hundred thousand out of that. Yeah, out of this number, if they went back three years, no. Instead of just doing 20, went back to like say 17, like how I married, you could probably get, almost get about another hundred thousand out of that. And be like seven hundred thousand men. But the ones that did it fear, though. Yeah. Yeah. But these are not fearful men. Mm -mm. No. Because if you did. Right, because that's 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 in the scriptures too. Find that where it talks about um those who are who are fearful, then <laughs> they don't go out the war too. Yeah, you know what that in the army, right? Yeah. Deuteronomy twenty. Deuteronomy twenty and one, I think it is. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> Everybody getting fearful, right? Right. This is the other. This is the other one. The other one that I wanted to go with Deuteronomy twenty four and five. This goes with that. Deuteronomy twenty and one, all the way down to eight. Oh, twenty. Deuteronomy twenty and one to eight. So it says. What are you reading? Deuteronomy twenty and one, all the way down to eight. Oh. So Deuteronomy 20 and 1 says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, Ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your power is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So that's why I said it's 600,000, but it's 600,000 with the Most High and the angels. So that's, that's, that's a lot, <laughs> right? So you see that the priests were also there on the front lines with the soldiers right before they went and engaged in a battle to give them that spiritual encouragement, right? It says, verse 5, And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that have built a new house and have not dedicated it? Let him go and return his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it, right? So if you just newly went and got a, a, a nice house, new crib, but you haven't really gotten it into it to dedicate it or furnish it or do anything, and you out here in the front lines and you die, somebody else gonna come in there and say, Well, thank you. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> right? Yeah, Go and right. dedicate it and put it in your family name and leave that for your inheritance, right? It says, And what man is he that have planted a vineyard and have not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. Right. So you have now just started these things and your heart might still be there that you haven't fulfilled certain things that you wanted to. So if you have that in mind, you need to go back. Right. Then it says in verse seven. And what man is there that have betrothed a wife and have not taken her? 
let him go and return her to his house lest he die in the battle and another man take her. So this is like we were talking about last uh, this night in the class with his prostitute questions and everything. <laughs> where, where, where it's like you enticing a woman, but you haven't slept with her yet, right? You enticed her, but then you haven't gone to consummate a big, you know, do the marriage. And here you got to go off the war, right? And now you on the front lines thinking about the woman that I was betrothing, but now I'm one month, two months, three months, four months out here in war, and then all of a sudden she lose favor with me, and then some other person come in because you gone, you ain't slept with it. That's not your wife yet. Like y'all was talking, you was enticing, but now you gone, and here comes somebody else. Now you out in the war, and you like, man, I'm done with the body. I'm about to come back <laughs> and get my wife, and she don't marry somebody else. You like, what the heck? Here I'm out fighting and I ain't even got to enjoy my soon-to-be wife. So he says, what? Um, let him go and rather return unto his house lest he die in the battle and another man take her, right? So, and then now he hasn't even raised up, see, married her to raise up seed unto her because now he never planned to see and he died, he gone, right? So this is where you need to go and Plant your seed, build your family. Verse eight, and but I'm saying if he gets his wife, have sex, and to have a baby, so that within that year the baby is able to be born mm -hmm. and is able to cheer her up with the baby and so on. Right, forth. that's what within twelve months. Exactly, like eight, nine, ten months, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Because once you go and you have your wife, that's why the Lord we read in Deuteronomy twenty four and five. You want to at least give yourself a year, right? To you know, she said, have the baby, build with the baby, unsee the baby, and everything else. You got people who going out to war, and they ain't seen their baby till they come home, right? It's like, yeah, and they just, you know, now we got technology where you can FaceTime and see the person, and you take back then they ain't had that. It was just based on on notes. Maybe you scribbled and you was a good artist, <laughs> and you drew what the baby looked like. But other than that, you had to wait till you came back from war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is verse eight and the officers shall speak further unto the people and they shall say what man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted let him go and return unto his house lest his brethren's heart faint faint as well as his heart because you know that can spread where you fearful right and you questioning and doubting everything what do, you, what do you think if they got, it's only about 5,000 of us, it's like 18,000 of them. Well, I don't think we can take them, man. I don't think we can take them. And you saying, I don't think we can take them. I think we should retreat right now. And then the person is like, you think so? Yeah, yeah man, look at him. Right, now, you know, spread to him and now he down. Man. Yeah, <laughs> now everybody out there with their gun like this, <laughs> shaking them, got their sword in their hand and it's like this. And you're like, man, I'm out. I don't want to die. Yeah. I got too much to live for, man. Listen, okay. Then you go back home. You we don't need that type of spirit out here. You run it with a gun and check. All right, so that was Deuteronomy 20 verses 1 to 8. <laughs> Boy, he made class. All right, so now we go to numbers 26. <laughs> I remember one time this guy came, I don't know if it was black, but he came back from the military and it destroyed him. And his wife trying to kill him <laughs> so she can get the money and be with whoever she wanted to be with. You know? And that's like, that was so terrible. I didn't even, that's not even, uh, that's just, that's sad to say, that's kind of like normal um, thought processes when people run into uh, financial issues and you got like a, a, a nice little insurance policy. It's like, you know, because that's what they say the first thing goes with, with uh, marital issues. One of the, the first things that cause strife between marriages is, is money issues. Yeah. When you don't have money and the, the money ain't coming in, and, and then now that's that trickling over to your personal space, and now you start hating the person and you don't want to be with the person no more because why am I in this situation? I could do bad all by myself type thing. So it's like, listen, I need to get away from this person. But now I don't want to get away. I want to get away and be financially stable man if that person can just die <laughs> i can get that money and it ain't happening fast enough 
right? So it's like, all right, maybe, you know, we can eat something or drink something or slip down the thing or whatever. And then, it's, hey, it wasn't me. So I can get the insurance punch. That's what you I see all that stuff a lot of times on them shows. It's, it's all about trying to get money away out of their death, right? Because their situation wasn't good. Yeah. So back in verse 51 now. I'm sorry, 52. So it's Numbers 26, 52. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. Oh, of the tribes, right? Right. So it says, to many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To everyone shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of their fathers, they shall inherit. Right? So now, as it pertains to how we divide up the inheritance on the land, those who had a lot more people, of course, should get a lot more inheritance. Those that had fewer should get fewer of the inheritance. Right? So that's how the Mosai. Huh? And Manasseh, too. And Manessa too. Looking at the map of it, Judah and Manessa. Right. Ephraim. Right. No, I mean Ephraim is big too. All right. But now it says, where am I reading? Uh, verse fifty-six. According to the lot, shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few, and these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites. Of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Merari, the family of the Merarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of Libnites, the family of Hebronites, the family of Mahaites, Mahaites, or Ma no, Malites, the family of Mushites, the family of the Korathites, and Kohath begat Amram. <clears throat> And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. Wow. And the name of Aaron's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she, this Jochebed, bare unto Aram, Aaron and Moses and Miriam, their sister. So Jochebed and Aram had those three. Aram. Right. That's another person, right? Right. No, that's 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 um that's their father. Oh, oh, oh. oh right. That's why it says, and the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, oh, the yeah. daughter right. of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. Colon. And she bare unto Amram, Aaron and Moses and Miriam their sister. So Aram and Jochebed are the parents of Moses, Aaron, and, and, and uh Right. Let's go to one. No, Exodus. Or you can go into Chronicles, actually. I think so. I want to look back. Moses like baby. Baby one. I'm not sure. 
So. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Yeah, but I'm going to go to First Chronicles because usually in Chronicles it gives you the lineage I break down. Uh, so in First Chronicles twenty three. Yeah, but it starts here. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, but I'm going. I'm going. Right. Um, so now, is this Leviticus? Genesis. No, I'm not going to Genesis. Aaron is older than Moses. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know Moses. Yeah, Moses is younger than Aaron. He made me do it. We ain't talking about Moses. Not Moses. Not Moses. That's real life. All right. So this is what I want here. Pardon me, those who are on the double teleconference live stream. Oh, is anybody here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he two before there. So you get the first chronicle twenty three and what? I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. So back in numbers. So I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna look at it um when we go on the on the break because it's gonna take me time to correlate it because it huh yeah yeah when we finish sir yeah and we're gonna when I get time because I don't want to take too much pause time on this on the class we'll come back and finish yeah um where were we at where were we at oh we was at fifty nine. So I'm going to read it again. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. Right? So you read about that. Um Yeah. Leviticus 10? Yeah. 10, 1 and 2. Um, Leviticus? Yeah. Yeah, Leviticus 10, 1 and 2. Yep. 10, 1 and 2. 10, 1 and 2. 
You want it to go in. You can read it real quick, huh? Okay, Leviticus 10. Oh, you train class. Leviticus 10.1. And Nadab. And Abu. A Bible. To either of them and them, his sisters, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offer strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded. They're not. That's when they got killed, right? Mm -hmm. And they're without fire from the Lord had devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Right. So the Most High had what type of incense he wanted to be burned before the altar, and you can't come with anything else. Strange uh, incense to burn on a fire. If you did, then you was going to be put to death. All right. And that's what happened to them. So that's Leviticus 10, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. To go with verse 61. And even if you remember God, but so you know, ointment with, ointment, ointment with the most I have. Yeah. He said, you don't make it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for the high priest. Yeah. The high priest. Yeah, that ointment that they made, you, you don't want that, that you were supposed to. I forgot because it, it, it tells you in there what was in it. But that wasn't something that you know you wanted to go in because it was just for them. You want to go and make it for somebody else for yourself? Nah. You go out there and you think you want to replicate and copy that right there? That was special. Yeah, that was special. <laughs> you you want to make it for yourself, right? I put it on, and like the most I would just get in that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are on verse, verse sixty-two. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males upward, twenty and up twenty months old, so like all males from a month old and upward. But they were not numbered among the children of Israel because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. Right? So they weren't given land. Um, the Levites weren't given land like the rest of them to be numbered amongst them. Verse 63. So Levi had. What does it say? Twenty and three thousand. So it says in sixty three, these are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these, there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord has said of them. They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, or Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Right? So none of those made it out. They all died in the wilderness. All of those men all died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Right? Just our huh? Those are just our people. Our people. Right. Right now, they don't want to listen. So, let me see. Uh, next week. Oh, next week, man. Before. One, two, I'm on the wrong one. What's today? Six. So next week would be in Luke in the New Testament, chapters eight to nine. Luke eight to nine. It's a lot of verses in them two chapters. Man. 56 and then 62. Man, it's a lot of stuff in them two chapters, too. It's a lot of stuff in there. All right, so 
that concludes today's Sabbath service lesson. Uh, most high as well. Um, we're fed spiritually to kind of to receive the understanding of the most high's word. We're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the most high for the knowledge, wisdom that was bestowed upon us to be able to understand and comprehend his scriptures. Um, again, keep in mind that next and within a week and a half, or almost a week and a half, will be the Passover. Passover. So a reminder for everyone to, you know, pay your required offering to the Most High, like it tells you in Deuteronomy 16, all males shall not appear empty before the Lord, meaning you have to come with an offering, whatever is, um, whatever you're able to provide, you have to provide something, you cannot come empty handed. We're not talking about food, you have to, the 18th sundown, right? <laughs> We're not talking about food because it's, you know, we're not requiring anyone to bring any food offerings that will be handled by um, priests to bring the, the offerings or the Passover, Amen. lamb, the boxes, everything. If you want to bring matzo bread, that's cool, but everything else will be provided. So um, provide your offering. Uh, we will be having it at the Bordentown Inn in Bordentown. I got to go and solidify that um, possibly, I think, this afternoon. I spoke to him this morning as well. Um, we will have it from about approximately 9 to 2 a.m. Um, please still try to get there on time, prompt. Every year we try to start earlier, sooner than most, because we don't usually get started until around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And we're only getting a chance to go through probably just Exodus uh, uh, 11. So we want to get, you know, a little bit more time. Probably just start with what we have. And then let those who filter in take care of everything else. But um, also keep in mind, try to start purging out leaven and out of your houses. Um, I think, let me make sure. I think uh, either if I don't have it or Kahan has it, the uh, Passover menu that we've had for a long standing years to be provided if you don't have one, email most likely, so that uh, you can understand and know what things are leaven outside of it just being explicitly written on it as far as for yeast and whey. There are some other clinical names that you know most people don't pay attention to. Um, so we can uh, provide that. I'm just trying to see if I had it somewhere here. Here it is. Um, so uh, it also has things in there of suggested eat suggested eating, forbidden eating, forbidden drinking. For those who don't know, what we also try to do outside of just the leaven, we try to eat as natural as we can. So we try to take things in its most natural state because we didn't have a lot of preser a lot of pres preservatives and things when we was coming out of Egypt. We just ate what was there. So for that week during the Passover, which we started was trying to eat as natural. So we know by law we gotta have all leaven out your houses. Mm -hmm. But if you can try to eat as natural as you can, you know, during that period. I Meaning don't rely a lot on um uh man-made man-made things that you may get try to cook and prepare your own food for that period if it all be um but like i said we'll we'll take this and try to uh um provide this out updated uh for today so that uh what for what we're doing now with today's date and everything on it um Huh? Just got back. Yeah. Yeah. I was out on the West Coast. So, um, also, um, outside of uh, get 11, as it was mentioned last uh, this evening, um, coming spiritually ready for the um, high holy day. We're in the first, first uh, month of the new year. 
um, which is a rebirth for us as we go into the holy days. It should be a refreshing and rejuvenating of ourselves to get our minds right, to get our spirits right, to get our hearts right. So for the the first high holy day of the year, we want to make sure that we come. And it's, and it's fitting, it's befitting that in that the spiritual aspect of the Passover is to remove a lot of, you know, carnal waste that we've gotten from society over the past several months to come and start a whole new year off the right way. So um, I advise us to kind of read those scriptures in Corinthians, read those scriptures found in 1 Corinthians, the eighth chapter, um, 2 Corinthians 15, like we went through this evening. Um, and then also read the uh, Exodus chapters one up to 11. To just get into the, into the in tune with um, the events that happened in the past, same as also reading Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 17 to 19. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17 to 19, Exodus 1 to 11. All right, so with that, we're going to close out the Sabbath service. I want to say, uh, Layla, uh, Layla, Asha Shabbat. Um, hopefully, everybody has a remaining Tawab Sabbath, a great upcoming week, and a strong spiritual defending of ourselves in this in this spiritual war that we're going on. So, um, Shalom. 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 Somebody get the blinds. Again, English translation. Blessed are you, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, that gives us the fruit of the vine. Thank you so be it to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai with Israel. Madra Punyoy Roslam, stand and face Jerusalem. Got you up, Hanka Bar. Yeah, I was always there. I know. I can see your expression on your face. <clears throat> Yahweh. Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kusha, Shemai, Lanawa, Aitha, Yam Yun, Aitha, Shalat, Maika Allah, Waha Allah Hayam, Tazwa Dakim, La, Shema Ayah, Barak, Rapa, Magun, Waha Kaziyat, Banya, Yasha Allah, Washalat. Lanawa, Rabium, Kakama, Rabium, the Ith, Rabium, Bayana, Rabium, Sabalanwa, Rabium, I'm a one, Rabium, Aqua, Rabium, Ahabium, Rabium, Hagana, Rokanaya, Wasalak, Ko, Kata Ayam Nawa, Lahaakim, Waakiwa. Wayasha Ella, from Yad, Waiwalum, Bahashum, Yahweh Shai, the water, Amun. Take this translation. Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, or the Most High, the name of Christ or Jesus, please unto us now, right now, to Michael and the righteous powers or angels to watch over, bless, heal, protect, and make strong the children of Israel. 
and send to us much wisdom, much knowledge, much understanding, much patience, much faith, much brotherhood, much love, much spiritual protection, and forgive all our and forgive all our sins for the brothers and sisters in Israel, always and forever, in the name of Yahweh Shai. Thank you, so be it. Four corners prayer. Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak Nawa, Wayasha Allah, Wabat Yasapayim, Shema Yasher Allah, 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 Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, or the most high in the name of Christ, bless us in Israel in the house of books or schools. In Deuteronomy 6 and 4, hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one power. That is again, Shalom, Yahshua Allah, Shashar Shabbat. Shabbat.